Whew, it's hot in here. And this one is gonna be a doozy. Okay, so this one's gonna be sort of a battle at the $200 price point. The Garmin 455 came out about a week ago, and when it came out, it had a whole new set of features that were specifically designed for runners. Not only that, it comes in at just 200 bucks, which is super cheap to get into the Garmin ecosystem. And when this hit the market, it had me thinking just one thing. How will this $200 Garmin stand up against the Coros Pace 2? In my opinion, the Coros Pace 2 is previously one of the most valued offers on the market. It's got a solid form factor, training tools, good accuracy, and crazy battery life. And again, just 200 bucks. So in this video, we're gonna put these two head to head, the Garmin 455 versus the Coros Pace 2. But spoiler alert, there's really no loser here, both these watches are fantastic for different reasons. Couple of disclaimers before we dive into this video though. This video is not sponsored by Garmin or Koros, but it is sponsored by my friends over at playbetter.com. Playbetter.com is a USA-based authorized Garmin and Koros retailer that offers free two-day shipping and a no-hassle 60-day free return policy. You can change your mind up to 60 days later and still get your money back, which is awesome. And for viewers of my channel, Playbetter does have a special discount on accessories that you can find down in the description down below. And of course, if you're interested in either of these watches, I'll have links in the description down below that do help support my channel, but it costs nothing extra to you. First up, let's take a look at the hardware between the 455 and the Coros Pace 2. At first glance, you can see that both of these watches are almost identically the same size. You've got the Garmin 455 on the left here and the Coros Pace 2 on the right. Both of these watches are 42 millimeters in diameter and they're about 11 and a half millimeters thick. In terms of weight, again, nearly identical here. The Coros Pace 2 comes in at 35 grams and the 455 comes in at 37 grams and that's something you wouldn't notice on your wrist. There is a little asterisk with the weight. Uh, Koros has two different kinds of bands. So in this watch I have the nylon band which is a lot lighter than the silicone band that you'd find on the 455. So that 35 grams is with the silicone band. If you get the nylon band it actually drops down to just 29 grams which is crazy light. In terms of the build quality between the two they're both entirely made out of plastic but neither one feels like they're gonna break. They they both feel pretty durable in the hand and when they're on your wrist, even if you whack them off a doorway or something, it, they don't feel like they're gonna break. So it's not that big of a deal that they're all plastic. However, they take two different approaches when it comes to the button layout, where the Kuros Pace 2 has the digital crown that you actually roll with your fingers, similar to like an Apple Watch or something like that. And it also has a dedicated back button below it. And the Garmin 455 actually has a five button layout, just like all of the other Garmin devices. This is totally personal preference. I prefer the five button layout, but some people really like that digital crown, so it's really up to you to decide. Flipping the watches over, we see the optical heart rate sensor on both in the middle here, and we'll talk about accuracy of that a little later on in this video. And then we've also got a very similar looking charging port on the outer edge there. Not the same cable, but they are pretty darn similar looking. <laughs> Interestingly enough, both of these watches share the same kind of band connection. These take an industry standard 20 millimeter quick release band. Basically, you can pop them off with your fingernail. I could actually take the nylon band off the cross and put it on to the 455. I'm not gonna do that right now, but you can do that. And there are tons of these bands available direct from Garmin, from Koros, and from third parties on Amazon. I'll link some of my favorite bands down in the description below if you're interested. In terms of the display of the watch, which is something you might have noticed in this video already, even though these two watches are nearly identical in size, the Koros Pace 2 actually has a larger display at 1.2 inches with a 240 by 240 resolution, where the Garmin 455 has a 1.04 inch display. Both of these displays are per perfectly usable. However, you'll notice that there's some pretty chunky looking bezels on the 455, which can make it look a little bit dated, even though it's a brand new watch. I've also noticed that the brightness of the Coros Pace 2 is just a little bit brighter than the display on the 455, and neither of these watches have the ability to adjust the backlight brightness, so it is kind of what it is out of the box, and you can't boost that brightness in a pinch. Another difference between the Coros Pace 2 and the 455 when you're actually in an activity using the watch out in the field, you can actually display up to six data fields on the Coros Pace 2 per page, so you can see a ton of information at a glance, and it's thanks to that larger 1.2 inch display. These data fields are fully customizable in the app, and it's really easy to do. Unfortunately, because the smaller display on the 455, you can only get up to four data fields per page during an activity. In terms of the user interface between the 455 and the Coros Pace 2, they're similar, but they do offer different features. On the Coros Pace 2, you simply roll the digital crown to cycle through the different widgets. And you can see here when I roll, 
I can go through my phone's notifications. I can go through the sunrise and sunset widget. I can go through the temperature widget and you can see here in my office right now, it's 91 degrees and I'm really trying not to sweat through my shirt right now. <laughs> We've got our barometer widget with a real time graph and this has got a little arrow at the top there to indicate if pressure is going up, maintaining or going down. Scrolling up again, we've got the elevation widgets. Then we've got the heart rate widget. We've got a summary widget of my day. So it shows my calories burned, my steps, my stairs climbed in active minutes. And then we've got some training widgets here, which we'll talk about a little bit further later on in this video. Generally speaking, the Crow's Pace 2 is very responsive. It's snappy. There's no lag. It's actually a very responsive watch. And you can customize the watch face on the Crow's Pace 2 to some degree from a selection of pre-installed watch faces. But there are additional ones you can download from the Crow's app. Now let me take a look at the Garmin 455's user interface, it shares some similarities, but it is a bit different. So again, you can customize the watch face on the 455 uh, a bit more than on the Chrono Space 2 because you can actually choose what data you want to see on the watch face. And you can actually download a bunch. There's like hundreds in the Connect IQ store in Garmin Connect, which let you customize it even further. Scrolling up or down from the watch face of the 455, we drop into the widget glances. These widget glances offer a variety of features, and these are actually like truncated views of different parts of the watch. So you can see more at a glance instead of just a full page widget. You can see here at the top, I've got some training tools for my estimated VO2 max. I've got the race predictor and my recovery advisor. Scrolling down, you've got history from my past runs from this week. You've got my heart rate graph. You've got my body battery, and this is a tool that tries to indicate how much energy you have left in your body for a given day. Basically, while you're sleeping, you're charging your battery up, and while you're living your life on a daily basis, going for a run or a bike ride, you're draining your battery. And the goal is to recharge your battery every night before depleting it again the next day. This is a handy tool, and that's something exclusive to the Garmin ecosystem that is not present on the Coros Pace 2 yet. Below that, we've got our steps widget to show how many steps we have for the day, and then we've got our phone notifications. This will show text messages, emails, Instagram, Instagram messages, whatever will show up in this menu. Below that, we've got a really nice weather widget, which will show the crazy high forecast today of 95 degrees Fahrenheit. It is so hot in here right now. This weather widget also shows a forecast of upcoming hours and upcoming days. Below that, we have the calendar widget on the 455, and this is pretty handy for showing birthdays or work meetings or whatever, whether it be from Apple Calendar or Google Calendar. And at the bottom here, we do have Garmin Coach. Garmin Coach is actually a selection of pre-made training plans that you can download from Garmin Connect. Those go from 5K all the way up to marathon distances. And at the bottom here, you can see that we can actually edit the widget glance menu by clicking here. It'll show our current widget widget glances and you can actually reorder these however you want. And then you can go down and you can actually add more. You can actually go through and add calorie widget, intensity minutes, uh, respiration, stress, or the menstrual tracking widget, which I don't need. And again, you can download more widgets from Garmin's Connect IQ. There's a ton to choose from. And it's also got some really unique features like assistance. The assistance feature is actually a safety feature where you can actually send a text message right from your watch without digging out your phone if it's in your pack or something like that. So you can see here it says things like, it's an emergency, please get help not an emergency, but please pick me up. I need help, follow my location. These are all kind of scary messages, but you get the idea here. If you're in an unsafe environment, you don't feel safe, you can trigger this from your watch pretty discreetly without taking out your phone. So as you can see, in terms of the overall user interface between the 455 and the Coros Pace 2, there's a lot of similarities, but the 455 is just a lot more customizable. You can move things around, you can configure things, you can download more widgets and apps from the Connect IQ store that you just can't do on the Crow's Pace 2. That said, the Crow's Pace 2 has enough widgets and features installed to get you by. There's not a lot of fluff or marketing hype here. Uh, it just kind of works and it has all of the basics that you need. Another difference between these two watches when you're in an activity is that you can't view real-time elevation data on the 455. The 455 lacks a real hardware altimeter, so it can't tell actual elevation when you're out in the field. Whereas the Crow's Pace 2 can tell you your min and max or average elevation because it has an onboard altimeter. Both the Coros Pace 2 and 455 are compatible with external sensors like heart rate bands and foot pods and things like that. However, the 455 is not compatible with power sensors where the Coros Pace 2 is. Another thing to note is that the Coros Pace 2 can actually record real-time running power data from the wrist itself without needing an external sensor like a stride pod or whatever. This is actually really cool and it's a metric that a lot of people value. So that's pretty nice for a $200 watch. The actual list of supported activities on these two watches is pretty different, which is kind of interesting. But at the end of the day, it's pretty obvious that these two are designed for mainly running, but they do other stuff as well. On the Coros Pace 2, it's pretty straightforward. You've got things like run, indoor run, track run, bike, indoor bike, pool swim, open water swimming, rowing, indoor rower, flat water, 
but you've also got things like triathlon, strength training, gym cardio, GPS cardio, and multi-sport. If we look at the 455, we've got run, virtual run, treadmill, track run, bike, walk, cardio, and other. But there's a few more that you can add in, like indoor track, bike indoor, walk indoor, pool swim, yoga, elliptical, high intensity training, stair stepper, Pilates, and breath work. One thing you'll notice right off the bat on both of those activity profile lists is that neither of these watches have a trail running activity, which kind of bums me out. And you might be saying, why not just use that run activity for trail running? It's not that big of a deal. You're mostly right, but there is an issue with that. Both of these watches offer some degree of advanced training metrics in the form of VO2 max estimation and recovery advisor. And if you use the run profile to do a trail run, it thinks you're on a paved road with no obstacles. When in reality on the trail, you're in the dirt and the mud, so it can't actually mess up your VO2 max data, which you may or may not care about. I kind of care about it. Now on the higher end Garmin devices, there is actually a trail VO2 max. So when you use the trail run activity, it offsets the difficulty. I don't know what algorithm they use, but they put some magic in there to solve this problem. But on the 455, that's not present because it's the entry level model. On the topic of training tools and VO2 max and all that stuff, Let's get into that part. Just recently, like a week ago, Chorus announced Chorus's Evo Labs Sports Science Technology. And I actually posted a video all about this release because it was pretty exciting. I'll link that video up there if you want to learn more about the platform. But in short, they added advanced training tools like recovery time, training load, seven day training status, all that stuff to the Chorus Pace 2, which is $200. That's kind of crazy. To put that into perspective, the 455 does not have training load or any of those other features. It does offer a recovery advisor and VO2 max estimation, but nothing more than that. If you want those other features like training load, you'll have to step up to the more expensive 400 245, 745, or 945. And those are much more expensive than the entry level 55 or the Coros Pace 2. I'm not gonna go too into the weeds on the Coros Evo Labs as a whole. Just go check out that other video if you're interested in that. I will say that this takes the cake in terms of training tools on the watch itself if that's important to you. So both of these watches will track your everyday wellness data like your steps and calories burned and sleep. I will say though in my testing so far the sleep data between the Chorus Pace 2 and the Garmin 455 hasn't matched up all that well so neither one's perfect there but they're probably okay for a general ballpark. When it comes to battery life between the 455 and the Coros Pace 2 you'd think they'd be miles apart because everyone knows Coros has awesome battery life but Garmin did pretty good with the 455 this time around. Garmin claims that you'll get up to 20 hours in a GPS activity on the 455 and around two weeks in smartwatch or standby mode. However, the Coros Pace 2 claims that you can get up to 30 hours of GPS activity or up to 20 days in smartwatch or standby mode. And I think both of these claims from both manufacturers are pretty accurate. I did some real-time testing the other day. I charged both watches to 100% and then I went out on a three hour trail run. By the end of that trail run, the Coros Pace 2 is at 92% and the Garmin 455 was at 86%. So they were close, but the edge definitely goes to the Coros Pace 2 in terms of battery life. One thing you are gonna sacrifice if you go for a Coros Pace 2 or the 455 is any form of navigation. These watches do not have any tools to help you navigate when you're out in the wilderness. You can't load a course or a GPX file onto them that's kind of left for the higher end watches. However, the Chorus Pace 2 does have a simple compass and it will actually give you your elevation. So if you had a paper map, you might be able to get by with navigating in a pinch. In terms of overall GPS accuracy between the Chorus Pace 2 and the 455, I've been pretty happy with both. I've taken these watches out on several runs together with some other watches as a baseline. I've taken them running in a lot of different scenarios, raining, cloudy, sunny, and on trails under trees, on the roads. And I think for the most part, they both did a pretty good job. Neither the Pace 2 or the 455 are perfect in terms of GPS accuracy, but they're acceptable. There's no big deviations. They don't wander off into the woods and their overall distance at the end of a run have been pretty similar. I will say that the 455 has locked and acquired GPS signal a little bit faster than the Pace 2, but really uh, kind of splitting hairs there. In terms of the optical heart rate sensors on the back of these watches and how accurate they are, they both performed pretty similar. Again, I've taken these watches out on several runs while also wearing my Polar H9 chest strap and the Polar Verity Sense arm strap. Those are two very accurate devices in my testing so far, so I try to use them as a baseline of comparison. And when comparing the 455 and the Coros Pace 2 to those devices, they've generally matched up pretty well with a few deviations here and there. For some reason on the Coros Pace 2, at the beginning of most of my runs, it takes like 30 seconds to a minute for it to get up to speed and actually lock onto my heart rate. It'll start really low. It'll be like down in the 80s and 90s while I'm up at the 130s and it'll eventually creep its way up there and then lock on. 
I don't know why it's doing this, but that seems to be a trend with the Coros Pace 2. The 455, however, does lock on pretty quickly, but I have noticed some spikes here and there and some drops here and there. So neither are perfect for different reasons. Generally speaking though, I'm nitpicking. If you weren't comparing them side by side, you probably wouldn't notice that much. And I'd say they're overall acceptable. And the final topic between the Coros Pace 2 and the 455 is gonna be the app and ecosystem that go along with that. The app that you use on your phone plays a big role on what's going on with the watch and how customizable and what you can do with it and all that stuff. And because the Garmin and Kuros apps are just so complex and have so much to them, I'm just gonna generalize and not go too into the weeds on all of the features that they offer. Garmin Connect as a whole has just so many features. There's the Garmin Connect IQ store. You can go back in time and view all of your data through months and years. You can actually log in through a web portal on a laptop or a full computer. You can export Excel files and spreadsheets. You can compare and contrast over years. And there's just a lot going on with Garmin Connect. To be honest, it's kind of overwhelming. There's, there's almost too much going on with Garmin Connect. But as a whole, the Garmin Connect ecosystem is very well polished and it tracks everything and records it into Garmin Connect. It's a really nice experience overall. The interesting thing here is how Koros took a much different approach to their app and ecosystem. It's a much simpler experience. Basically, when you open the app, you've got your dashboard page with all of your information, like your steps and calories burned, stairs climbed, your sleep data, all that is laid out right there. Very simple and easy to read. The Koros app also lets you customize your activities data fields right in the app. So you can click on your virtual watch face and click what data you want to see and then it syncs over to the watch. When you want to customize the data on your 455, you actually do that on the watch and it's kind of tedious. And within the Coros app, you can set up a strength training plan, which is actually laid out really nicely. You can choose what part of your body you want to work out. And it's got a bunch of predefined workouts in there that have a little animation to tell you how to do them. And then you can build a structured workout plan right there. You can also do this in Garmin Connect, but it's a little bit more complicated to get it done. And it's easier to do on a full blown computer than on your phone. And like I said before, the Garmin 455 does feature Garmin coach which helps you train for a 5k up to a marathon with a pre-made workout made by Garmin. Koros on the other hand does have a training plan tool where you can create your own training plan month by month week by week you can set up where your long run is and your watch will remind you you can execute the workout on the watch it's pretty cool stuff. However there aren't that many pre-made workouts to choose from so you kind of have to know where you're doing to structure and set it up. Okay it's way too hot in here to keep going and I've been blabbing way too long let's get to the point which one's better which one's right for you the Koros Pace 2 of the 455. Well, unfortunately, there's not really a direct winner here. All I can say is that they're kind of designed for different people. The Garmin 455 has more wellness tracking tools with stress tracking and body battery. It also has a more diverse set of activity profiles with yoga, Pilates, and high intensity training. I will say that the 455 also seems to be just a little bit more of a better smartwatch with better phone integration and even little things like holding the lower left button so you have music controls right on your wrist and you don't have to dig out your phone to change tracks. The overall polish of the ecosystem and firmware and app are just really good and there's something to be said for that. On the other hand, the Coros Pace 2 seems to be a better overall sports watch. You've got activity profiles like triathlon and multi-sport mode that aren't available on the 455. And you've got those new training tools with Coros Evo Labs giving you VO2 max estimate, seven day training load, graphs, and all the information right on your wrist knowing where you are in your training. This is a huge leg up for the Coros Pace 2 and makes it a more valuable sports watch over the 455. Honestly though, at the end of the day, both the Coros Pace 2 and the 455 are excellent GPS multi-sport watches. And I think if you're already in one of these ecosystems, I would just stick with the ecosystem you're already in. But if you're not already in an ecosystem and this is your first time getting into it, this is a much harder choice. But like I said, there's really no winner or loser here. It's really up to you to decide. What do you need? What features are you looking for? Find which one ticks all the boxes and then go for that one. In either case, I applaud both Garmin and Koros for designing really awesome watches at a $200 price point. You're not really making a huge amount of sacrifices with either one of these and they're both really good. Okay, that brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it and you're still watching, you probably are because you're still watching, please consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing down below so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. It really helps me out quite a bit. And I wanna hear from you. Which one's right for you? The Coros Pace 2 or the 455? Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, that's all I got for this one. I probably missed something. I probably did. But you know what? I tried my best here. I'm doing what I can. I'll see you next time. Bye. <music>